Thank you very much. Uh, I will just verify whether you see my presentation without the speaker notes, whether everything's working OK. Yes. Great. So let's launch it. So um, I'm the principal investigator of the Dissident Networks project, which focuses on medieval uh, inquisitor records. Uh, so we're looking at uh, legal sources as well, uh, namely uh, records of heresy inquisitions. And we have been busy, and this will be my topic today. We have been busy developing a uh, quite complex data model and workflows of data collection and analysis, uh, which uh, are perhaps slightly, uh, slightly ad hoc uh, and still less concerned with standard so I'm very happy that I hear that that some projects uh, also start like that, and only later on they uh, they they uh, they become more concerned about aligning uh, to some more standard um, ontologies and finding finding uh, finding some standardization uh, over the um, over the course of events. Um, uh, I won't be proposing any revolution in technical terms. Everything we are using is out there, uh, and also this will be presented very much from a non-technical point of view uh, i'm a historian of inquisition and the middle ages and just just like interested and practicing uh, computational history but not really, uh, not really a, a programmer or or, or a database uh, architect, definitely. But I hope that some of this will be uh, will be interesting for uh, for uh, historians and data scientists in uh, in working in history uh, anyway. Uh, so uh, this has been funded by several bodies, uh, uh, by the Czech Science Foundation. Most of the development of uh, of what we have been doing uh, more recently, uh, we have got the funding from the European Research Council, and uh, this all is hosted at uh, at um, at a at a vibrant center for the digital research of religion at Masaryk University. I haven't been working on this alone. Uh, this is my older team, which is now being expanded under ERC funding. But so what's it all about? Uh, what's the background? Uh, we are developing uh, computer-assisted approaches to medieval uh, inquisitorial records. Uh, and we aim uh, at identifying uh, three kinds of patterns in those records. Uh, social patterns, spatial patterns, and discursive patterns. And we're looking both at dissidents and at the trial, at inquisitorial trials themselves, at inquisition, at the interaction at trial. And so uh, what we uh, end up finding, of course, is a lot of information on human interactions. Uh, Inquisition, Inquisition records are great to do that, by the way, uh, since it, it is exactly that they, 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 they are focusing and they provide uh, quite nice rich data uh, on, on these pre-modern interactions about, among even non-elite specific uh, individuals. So and uh, of course uh, this drives us uh, uh, drives us to uh, actually look slightly more generally on the collection and analysis of structured data. Also because this uh, this is hugely uh, interesting, but at the same time challenging kind of source uh, where really you um, you you need to take source criticism in consideration. You cannot just uh, just uh, proceed along some um, uh, some line of fact oriented data collection and think that uh, everything will be fine. Um, simply, there are many conditions under which the, these um, this kind of source uh, or where this kind of source uh, were produced, uh, and we we need to keep track of these conditions of production. So, uh, broadly speaking, of course, the question is how do we get from our medieval sources uh, to structured data such as uh, points on a map or um, nodes and edges in a social network, uh, which is some of the dominant methodologies we are using in the uh, in the project. So, uh, well, what were our points of departure in uh, in terms of data management approach to data more more broadly? Uh, we we definitely knew a couple of things since the outset. Mainly, we uh, we had the feeling uh, that uh, relational databases are uh, not the kind of thing, not flexible enough. Even if, of course, anything that we do can, in one way or another, be done with uh, with uh, practically uh, any relational database. Uh, so we we were looking at uh, at uh, this idea of uh, semantic triples at graph databases, and we were also concerned about uh, being able to implement some uh, some custom classifications because we have different editors, 
different theoretical foundations of research, different questions. Um, and also we wanted to start quite quickly and rather build up than uh, spend th three years developing um, a standardized solution and then 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 start our uh, our works. So uh, in this sense, it was not based on on agile principles, but uh, but I understand quite well that uh, that uh, we have uh, at least used some aspects of of this. But most importantly, we have been uneasy about this fact-oriented data collection that predominates uh, in a computational history because computational history is, um, is uh, notoriously data hungry. And so we sometimes uh, jump too quickly uh, to, those, uh, to those facts, uh, like what happened uh, after, of course, performing some criticism, but not always. Um, uh, Putting this, uh, the information, uh, the crucial for understanding the uh, these these facts in context into the data themselves, and therefore we shield kind of um, this from the analysis, and we think uh, in this sense we think this is a problem. So our our answer to all this uh, is an approach that we call, and uh, it's it's an idiosyncratic term uh, that we just uh, came to like. Uh, we we speak about source modeling. Um, the idea there uh, is actually that the first model is not a model uh, of of a, of a hypothesis. Uh, it's not. Uh, um, it's actually a model of the source uh, itself, which results in quite comprehensive uh, data collection. Uh, sometimes it drives us crazy, uh, but uh, it has already some payoffs. So uh, if you take a typical uh, inquisitorial record, uh, you have mentions there such as asked by the inquisitor, uh, this and that person said that uh, that they had seen Bernarda Ador heretics uh, in Lanta some 20 years ago. So uh, what uh, what often comes out of this is is that in in our data that that we collect, but we think this is a problem that Bernarda adored heretics uh, in this place of Lanta um, uh, around uh, twelve twenty five, but there are losses there. We lose. Who is speaking? Uh, we lose to whom and in what context? Is there an inquisitorial question behind? Is it recorded? Uh, and what's the time span between uh, the deposition and the event? All this is lost if we simply construct this as a fact uh, that we uh, that we just we just assess the certainty of. Uh, and so we try to model actually really the source itself. Um, in that sense, our approach is strongly uh, source driven uh, and it's uh, it's uh, also strongly syntactic, so we try to follow the, uh, you might say, the, the, the structure of natural language, um, and it's very close uh, to linked data, even if, as I say, uh, we, we haven't really uh, been mapping this too much onto, onto some standards. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we selected a more ad hoc, ad hoc approach for now. So uh, our, uh, as I said, as I said, it's a very syntactic approach that will be familiar to uh, to most of you here. Uh, it's uh, it's more exotic at medieval studies conferences. Here, uh, here, I guess I uh, can go a little quicker. Um, so we we of course have have the subject, verb, um, objects. We're 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 well off with with two 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 slots for objects, uh, and we are uh, we are we are like building our uh, our knowledge base uh, based on based on this this uh, this structure of quadruples um, but we what what's perhaps more important um, is that oh by the way I don't see the moderator so I'm not sure uh, whether you're already stopping me a little bit <laughs> yes I'm trying Sorry, okay I, you're uh, okay I, I think I've, I've overthrown about a minute or two so you still have mm -hmm. a minute left that's that that's great so basically the point I wanted to make is that we do not just collect that something happened but also in what context that this information was reported and uh, in inquisitorial records this uh, cascade of information flow, is a big thing uh, that needs to be preserved if we want to perform something like uh, source criticism uh, in a new computer-assisted way. And so we're trying to preserve a lot of complexity, not just this information flow, uh, but also uh, also uh, fuzzy information uh, and claims that uh, that are somehow uncertain. Uh, and we preserve the original languages. So basically, our database speaks Latin, our database speaks Middle English. Uh, we preserve even the stated circumstances 
circumstances of actions, uh, the stated causes of action. So, so actually, what we do is is a very comprehensive model uh, model of the data, which might be regarded as extreme in terms of uh, how time consuming it is. We easily spend five or seven hours on one page of the uh, edition. So uh, we start simple in Google Sheets, uh, and it was a great decision because uh, it enabled us uh, to, to actually build up from, from very simple structures um, and made our data model very tailored to the data we have, uh, to the inquisitorial records. Uh, we are now in the process of, um, of making a transition uh, to a, a more complex structure or, and a, a more uh, friendly user interface, uh, which we call Inquisitor. So um, overall, uh, we try actually to uh, to build some some communication interfaces. And don't take me for my word because I'm uh, really not a technician. So sorry about bad terminology. But uh, we have our user interface which communicates with uh, with uh, with a uh, document based database, everything DB, which is basically JSON files. Each statement is stored as, as a JSON file, even quite complex uh, structures of statements are stored like that. Uh, and the and our aim now is to build uh, on top of that um, a, a graph database, uh, which we don't have yet, uh, and which will never or is not intended as data storage, but rather as, a, as, a, as an uh, environment for making data projections. So uh, last slide on the takeaways. Uh, um, we we thought that um, it's it's really good to take the le lessons from the first um, from the first year uh, history curriculum uh, very seriously. That means don't take sources at face value, model sources first, uh, and uh, do not relegate uh, these source critical information just to the uh, in introductory or closing sections, but make them a part of the analysis itself, like really the the kind of social network analysis or whatever you are doing. Uh, and for to do this, you need this uh, in the data, which uh, which is a way how to how to build something we call um, only partly by joke uh, source criticism to zero, uh, which really is searching for ways how to practice source criticism criticism um, uh, in uh, uh, in an uh, in, in computational historiography. So we try to separate data collection from specific data projections, which are already uh, driven by specific hypotheses. And we tried to um, uh, not accept the limitations of the available software, Atlas TEI um, uh, or uh, NodeGoat. We tried to build something of our own. Uh, sorry for running out of time and thanks for listening.